So, any initial observations from that talk from Tim Berners-Lee? He's the head of the World Wide Web. He's driving everything. Any particular comments? Surprising, you don't actually hear a lot about linked data as much as I would expect to hear. Okay. And anybody want to pick up on that? What, what, have, what have you come across already on terms of linked data? I hadn't heard of it before either until investigating this stuff. I'm not exactly sure what it means, to be quite honest. No, I don't. No. And then he said, like, that government thing is going to be put. This is 2009, yeah? Yeah. Uh, Obama went back on that in 2011. They're not going to host any kind of data or online sources. Uh, are you sure about that? Because yeah. I'm going to show you something. All right. Well, we'll see what we'll see. Okay. Right. So, he's saying, basically, we, we've got... We can unlock this data to solve these problems. He wants to use the web as this vehicle for putting the data up and then using it for good, for good purposes. And the idea of linking it together, his argument is that it makes it even more powerful. We get the raw data and then link it together in some way, and it makes it really useful to us. So that's his basic <coughs> line of argument, and that's really links in quite nicely with the kind of assignment you do it on the module, actually, in terms of uh, looking at the data and what you can do with it. So. Let's have a look at what's happened then. Some open sources of data sort of following from, from uh, Tim Berners-Lee's talk. So, the UK government has produced, have you maybe one or two of you come across this already and you're hunting around, has produced a whole load of data launched in uh, January 2010. And if we go into the data section, there's all sorts of stuff in here. If we go into the data section, the data sets here, then, well, you know, there's a fair amount of uh, information in there, thousands of data sets, um, all kinds of different things, driving license data, for example, driving licenses issued by the UK driving license agency, traffic counts, building prices, all kinds of things in here. Um, see if we can find anything okay openness score data okay so this this is we'll see what's in here five stars for openness score hmm? there's 210 Ten. results that are linked yeah and there's 16 that are 17,000 that are unlinked yeah so there's some work being done on this you know, there's still a lot of a lot of uh, places to go. Bathing water, energy generation from solar panel, PV arrays. Um, Richard has mentioned that a few times in terms of uh, solar. What's it called? I can't remember the name of the website offhand. Solar portal. Solar portal. Seven percent of data is linked on that website. There you go. There you go. So you can see that. Point seven percent. Not even one percent. Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant. It's like yeah, they, they, they make it look like they're doing it, but not but, really. Well, the point is that there's this data is available for us to use. Yeah, yeah. But who is going to link it? That's well, no, that's that's, that's the thing, isn't it? That's what I meant. In the you guys, maybe. I'm not going to spend statement. the Friday linking data. For they have the same website for uh, American government where they link all kinds of reports, but most of them like have data Excuse management and stuff like that, which makes. It, it's not even hard to keep track. It makes no sense because half of it is missing due to it being um, prior information, and they don't anim anonymize it, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't publish it. So half of it, it makes no sense because you can't link it. So you either have to go yourself and anonymize the data to make sense of it, which will take you a lot of time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A website like GitHub, though, for example, where people are constantly contributing, and it's this, it's almost this patchwork quilt of yeah. information. It's a shame that this is the same principle isn't applied, or people don't really know about it, or people don't know how to actually yeah. do what is. You need particular skills, I think, to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is the kind of thing. Starting point for that. Well, exactly. So exactly. So. So. The point is that that the UK government has actually started to publish open data. Um, 
and there's around about 19,000 data sets on different uh, departments, government departments. Ordnance Survey have put all their mapping data online, which is very useful to us. And also the government financial figures and spend um, for the UK as well. UK government are all on there. So it, this information, through the kind of pressure put on by Tim Berners-Lee and others, is actually now starting to be published. And then you can tap into that. Maybe something in there to use for the, for the work for this assignment, for that uh, kind of stuff you're doing. And there's Tim Berners-Lee, actually, was I've got a big hand in this UK government project. He was one of the driving forces behind it, as his sort of philosophy shows in these sort of new, well, the, the new ideas he's trying to put together. Um, and uh, so he was a key, a key mover and shaker, if you like, in terms of getting the UK government to put their data online. I don't know what's happening in some of your other countries that you're, you're involved in, but uh, you know it's coming up. Absolute corruption, there is no difference. <laughs> <laughs> you wish. Mm. How else are they going to do all of those, oh, the money disappeared, <laughs> send us more money. So, and there's a li quite nice interview there as well with Tim Berners-Lee about uh, his role in, in this. So that's from uh, 2010 or so, five years ago now. So, okay. So what are, what are the UK sources are there? We've seen the government putting data up, London Data Store, uh, Greater London Authority, Lit Mayor of London. You've seen those two data sets are linked up from London database. Yeah. So have you come across this in your hunting around? So there's uh, London, well, London Crime. So this is London data, public journeys. Uh, employment statistics, cycle flows, vehicles entering congestion charge zone. So, again, there's a whole quite whole range of stuff in there. May be useful to you, may not, but worth part of your search in, around. That's the very first find. thing I found. What was it? That's the very first one. I the found. London data set. Yeah. Okay. They've also got what they call the linked data sets as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, we showed this a minute ago, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, statistics is quite interesting. Yeah. Can you can I have retention, please? Polish people are you, so, lots of places to go, uh, and then so there's local, there's national government, London government, and then there's local data. I remember looking at data.gov, and there was no uh, Amber Valley. So we've got local data here for local regions, so Derby, for example. Um, let's do a, I, was gonna, I thought that was going to be a search box. It's not. Um, enter keywords. Let's put Derby in. See what we get. Zero. If you think on a, lo ah, on a local you. scale, who is going to be employed by Derby City Council and who's going to actually get paid to upload these data sets? There's no motivation uh, to do it at all. Isn't there like legislation that they're meant to do them? So it's that's lobby. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. It's meant well, to like the play some students. Play some students in the play off. Yeah, social. That's social. Yeah. It's, 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 it's her job last year. <laughs> so you can see what's happening. You know, this this drive to publish data. UK government's doing it, London are doing it, local governments are doing it uh, as well. So let's have a look at some others. So what kind of tools are there for you to help, help you to process this and maybe even link it together in some way? Um, and there are some apps around. This one is the Open Data Companion here. And it says it's access to 120 open data portals and thousands of data sets. I actually had a sort of looked at downloading this, I'd got as far as almost paying for it, so it's not free. I'm not exactly sure how much it is. What's the damage on it? If it's a few quid, tenner, something, it's maybe worth maybe worth tapping into because I mean, you know, what's that in terms yeah, of your from university. What's that in terms of your uh, degree worth? Okay. Yeah, 
Android. Yeah, it's just on. Uh, it's just an Android through Google Play. So that's worth having a look at to see what might be useful to you. Yeah. And there are there are others as well. There's some maps on the data gov site. 383 apps. Again. Why is there so many apps? Well, because the open data is there and people are putting it up. People are making apps to do it. So there's a few in there. There's an open data thing here. No votes, yes. Okay. So again, places to go. And then there's, a, there's another one here. App Showcase. Um, By postcode. So the university postcode is DE221GB. See how deprived Derby is? Oh, okay, fine. I'm watching one of the I'm still doing it. Oh, my. Oh, oh, one found. So there's. Let's see. That's, yeah. What's this? this is all live, of course. I've not tried this before. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. This is it. it. How deprived are we? <laughs> So I don't know what's how far that goes. Okay, there's not actually that much in it. Must be a project. So there's all sorts of things in here. Income score. So you would be able to put loads of postcodes and Darby and compare them all. So, so lots of places to go, people to see, things to do oh, on these different uh, open data source kind of sites. Okay, that's what about? Uh, let's have a look at um, Europe and the States. Europe. Let's go look at you. Let's see how my country fares. Open data portal. You have zero family resources. No, minus one. Okay, so these are the data sets. European Union. Can we search for the Palladian out Yes. Yes, please. I'm going to guess there's 300. 937. Landing of fishery products in Lithuania. What else is there? Oh, the thing after the Euro. It's on the thing, like, nine months now. Maritime transport, goods, fleet passengers. Uh, passengers transport between main and Freight. Yeah, okay. Domestic violence. Is there much domestic violence in Lithuania? Ah, uh, no, there's a lot of suicide. Okay. Third in the world. Uh, no All right. FGM as well. I'm on skip move on from swiftly from that one. <laughs> okay, so you can see that for your project work. Let's have a look at US then. Yeah, the data Oh wow, they changed it. So there's nineteen thousand hundred and ninety thousand compared to our twenty four. Twenty thousand or so, yes. Um, Okay, so well, have let's have a look. So, again, Wisconsin. Where, whereabouts were you? Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Oh, location down here. No, it's because you by, um, yeah, searching by blocks. Okay. China. There's a location China. Let's try that. Geological map. Okay, <coughs> Central Bureau of Office. Air temperatures, National Assessment of Oil and Gas Projects. Hmm, okay. I was in 60606. 
Is that gonna? Six oh six oh six. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. So a few odds and ends there. Don't know what's in them. Well, you've got. Ending, yeah. You can see the different file formats as well. Zip, HTML. That you can uh, explore and, and download and see what there is in there. It doesn't cost you anything. Just a bit of time and a bit of. Uh, Okay, <laughs> so I had a look around and found these open data sources as well. World Bank, World Life Apply Fund, UNESCO, World Health Organization, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, United Nations, Google, Amazon also put stuff up. And this is just a handful of ones that I found. Um, which one will be, I don't know, let's have a look at Amazon. Tim has made a comment recently about this uh, link data. I haven't. I don't think he's done anything recently. I didn't come across anything. There's a, I've got another. Okay, so public data sets from Amazon. And it gives you some stuff in here as well. So again, another thing to look at for your own exploration of data sets. Uh, United Nations, big international organization, of course. Uh, not quite so easy to find in there. There's no obvious data, no obvious data um, button. Um, oh, UNESCO data, let's have a look at that. So it's, they've got you. United Nations, well, UNESCO, easy to say. They've got the data centre here. Um, you can create your own if you really want, but you won't be doing that, I don't think, for this particular module. Um, but um, you can see uh, the kind of things that we've got, country profiles. Central Eastern Europe. Don't know what's in there. Let's have a look. So, um, the Gapminder, if you've not seen that before, that is quite an amazing um, tool, visualis visualization tool, um, which and, uh, Hans Rosling that Tim Berners-Lee mentioned in there was, and he showed a bit of it as well. And they've got a lot, they've got a lot of data sets that they've used for doing their visualizations. Okay, there's, a, there's one here about earthquake deaths. Okay. That must have been a data So, let's have a look at the sort of graph for that. So, this is from 1970s up to around about 2010, 2008. Yeah. So, if we just play the, the graphic. So it shows you the blobs are the colours of the, oh, the parts of the world, and you can tick them as well. So, yeah. which ones are the most? Yeah. Which are yeah. the? Where's the most earthquakes? Um, uh, India. Uh, India. Japan. India. Japan. Yeah, Japan. Yeah. How many of the uh, places? Well, Haiti. Haiti. Haiti's not in there, but. 
those sort of Central American, yeah. Italy maybe as well, I think one or two in there. So let's try that one. I think the idea is you can pinpoint. Oh, I thought you could just oh, deselect all. Okay, so stop. stop, 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 stop. Deselect. Okay, all right. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the the style of the mm -hmm. presentation here. And there's lots of data. They they sort of. Uh, Allocated and shown you which data sets they've used. So all the all the information that they've used is all there as well from all the different data sets. Okay. So let's just finish off then. We started with Tim Berners Lee. A year later, he actually did a sort of a, a five minute recap on what had happened over the year since uh, he did that first first talk. So let's just have a look at five minutes of Tim Berners-Lee and see what he, what he concluded. Last year, here it said, I asked you to give me your data, put the data on the web, on the basis that if people put data onto the web, government data, scientific data, community data, whatever it is, it will be used by other people to do wonderful things in ways that they never could have imagined. So today, I'm back just to show you a few things, to show you, in fact, there is an open data movement afoot now around the world. The cry of raw data now, which I made people make in the auditorium, was heard around the world. So let's uh, uh, roll the video. Classic story, the first one which a lot of people picked up was when in March, March 10th, in fact soon after Ted, Paul Clark in the UK government blogged that, oh, I've just got some raw data. Here it is. It's about bicycle accidents. Two days it took the Times Online to make a map, a mashable map. We call these things mashups. A mashup user interface allows you to go in there and have a look and find out whether your bicycle route to work was affected. Here's more data traffic survey data, again put up by the UK government, and because they put it up using the link data standards, then a user could just make a map just by clicking. Does this data affect things? Well, actually, let's get back to 2008, look at Zanesville, Ohio. Here's a map a lawyer made, put it on at the water plant, see which houses are there, which houses have been connected to the water, and he got from other data sources information to show which houses are occupied by white people. Well, there was too much of a correlation, we felt, between which houses were occupied by white people and which houses had water, and the judge was not impressed either. The judge was not impressed to the tune of $10.9 million. That's the power of taking one piece of data, another piece of data, putting it together and showing the result. Let's look at some data from the UK now. This is UK government data, completely independent site. Where does my money go? Allows anybody to go there and borrow down. You can borrow down by a particular type of spending, or you can go through all the different regions and compare them. So that's happening in the UK. With UK government data, yes, it certainly you can do it over here. Here's a site which allows you to look at the recovery spending in California. And take an arbitrary example, Long Beach, California. You can go and have a look at what recovery money they've been spending on different things such as energy. In fact, this is the graph of the number of data sets in the repositories at data.gov and data.gov.uk, and I'm delighted to see a great competition between the UK in blue and the US in red. How can you use this stuff? Well, for example, if you have lots of data about places, you can take it from a postcode, which is like a zip plus four, for a specific group of houses, you can make paper, print off a paper which has got very, very specific things about the bus stops, the things specifically in the EU. Larger scale, this is a, a mashup of the data which was released about the Afghan elections. It allows you to set your own criteria for what sorts of things you want to look at. The red circles are polling stations selected by your criteria, and then you can select also other things on the map to see what other factors, like the threat level. So that was government data. I also talked about community generated. In fact, I edited. This is the wiki map. This is the OpenStreetMap. 
terrace theatre I actually put on the map, because it wasn't on the map before Ted last year. I was not the only person editing the open street map. Each flash on this visualization put together by ITO World shows an edit in 2009 made to the open street map. Let's now spin the world during the same year. Every flash is an edit. Somebody somewhere looking at the open street map and realizing it could be better. You can see Europe is ablaze with updates. Some places, perhaps not as much as they should be. Here, focusing on, in on Haiti, the map of port au -Prince at the end of 2009 was not all it could be. Not as good as the map of California. Fortunately, just after the earthquake, GOI, the commercial company, released satellite imagery with a license which allowed the open source community to use it. This is January, time lapse, people editing, that's the earthquake. After the earthquake, immediately, people all over the world, mappers, who wanted to help and could, looked at that imagery, built the map, quickly building up. We're focusing now on port au -Prince. The blue is refugee camps these volunteers have spotted from the air. So now we have immediately a real-time map showing where there are refugee camps. It rapidly became the best map to use if you're doing relief work in port au -Prince. Witness the fact it's here on this Garmin device being used by rescue team in Haiti. There's the map showing on the left-hand side there that hospital, actually that's a hospital ship, this is a real-time map that shows blocked roads, damaged buildings, refugee camps, it shows things that they needed. So, if you've been involved in that at all, I just wanted to say that whether, whatever you've been doing, whether you've just been chatting all day to now, you've been putting government or scientific data online, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you very much, and we have only just started. Just the ultimate Rolex classic since 1945. Right. So that's by way of scene setting then. So we'll do a little bit of a an exercise brain work now. Then then we'll have a, a break and then come back and do a bit more later on. So a bit of a bit of brain work activity now for you. Okay. And we'll see what kind of issues we've come across based on what I've just been talking about. So we'll have a look firstly then at the first activity, some blue skies thinking as a group, and see what kind of things we may come up with. This is a joint community effort, okay? So, what are they? You don't really need to be tapping in just yet. What are the key problems with the world today? Do you think? And how do you think we might be able to address them with open data? What, what are the biggest problems in the world today? Global warming. thing that stands out to me? Ebola. Ebola. <laughs> it's, it was a particularly large issue in where the countries affected Liberia, was it where else around there? But I think it's, from what I can gather, it's largely been under control now. But yes, that's an interesting one. There was a big scare about that, especially spreading throughout the world. Okay, yeah, interesting. Migration. Migration. Yeah. Migration and refugees. Now that to me is perhaps the biggest the biggest issue. Okay. So let's just spend a few minutes as a you know, as a group, some blue some, some group sort of blue skies thinking here. What is the refugee problem at the minute? What's driving it? What's happening in terms of refugees? Wars. And where are they? Syria. 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 Mostly Middle Eastern area. And where else? Most other countries. Uh, Ukraine. Yemen. Mm, uh, Ukraine is. No one's really going for me. Yeah, no, it's, not, it's not just. 
So these are in Afghanistan as well. Yeah. I can't remember, I can't remember how to spell Afghanistan. Okay. So what's happening in those countries? Um, what is driving it? The two governments fighting, uh, the um, Bashar al-Assad and yeah. then the uh, okay. revolutionaries. So Iraq has the problem of ISIS, I think. Is that right? And then Yemen. Yeah, so, so. And Yemen is also the same with Kurdish freedom fighters fighting for it, I think. Okay, so you've got all these not, factions not battling not over, over, over territory in Syria. Some, somewhat like that. Okay, so what is, what's the human problem there? What's happening uh, with civil war yeah, in Syria? But what's the result of that? I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of people. People are leaving moments. the country, aren't they? Yeah. They're, they're trying to get to Europe. Because yeah. they're displaced. Yeah. And where are they ending up? Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Turkey. <laughs> Turkey, they're ending up in Turkey. And Germany. then where do they go to after that? Oh, they go to Germany. Greece. <laughs> and then. Why do they go to Greece? Because no, well, why, once why, to Greece. Well, Greece is okay. Why anyway. do they go to Greece from Turkey? Uh, uh, so because going. that's part of the EU, and then once oh, again. It's the it closer. It's just across the water. It's yeah. very far. Yeah. Okay. In a boat. Okay. Yeah. There was some, you know. Okay, so Greece has got a huge problem at the minute um, in a place called Lesbos, where they've got thousands of easy to remember names. Yeah. Thousands of refugees coming in, okay. and then they've got to go somewhere else, and they're ending up, ending up in the. Uh, A lot of them are in the Channel <coughs> Tunnel, you know, trying on the French to side, here. trying to get over here. Okay. So there's a journey. Germany is here as well, taking quite a few. Uh, Scandinavia. Okay. Yeah, Sweden. Sweden. So Sweden, Sweden as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Committing uh, cultural suicide yeah. by taking so many. Okay. So what are the numbers involved? Do you know what the numbers involved are? How many, uh, how many refugees are, are Germany going to take this year? Eight, the official figures uh, 800,000 in uh, Germany, 2.2 million in Turkey. Yeah. Okay. Um, Greece has, I think, it's hard to pin down Greece because they're not really staying in it. It's more like a transitioning point. We, we, we're talking about millions of people here, not just one or two families. We're talking about a huge amount of people. Germany are going to take about a million of refugees this year. Do you know how many the UK are going to take? Uh, oh, probably about 20, I think it's like 20,000 or something that was said. 20,000 over five years. I think so, yeah, something like that. Okay. So yeah. small. I think it'd be more than that. Yeah, no, it's 20,000 over four years. Okay. Because yeah. um, of stricter reviews okay. in uh, application yeah. process. Right. So you might see where I'm going with this. This is a huge real world problem. Yeah. Okay. And one of the things about big data and using this try and solve real world problems, if you like. Okay. So, a bit of blue skies thinking. How could we possibly use, just imagining an ideal sort of, imagine you can do anything you like almost in mm -hmm. terms of technology, for example. So these wars here are driving people away into Europe because it's close. Some countries are, are being more open than others. Others are blocking borders between Croatia and where was it again? Somewhere around Croatia. Uh, Hungary, was it Hungary? Hungary, Hungary yeah. and Croatia or something. And they're, they're now blocking the borders and, uh, and, and restricting the. Uh, what's, what's Serbia, isn't it? As well. Slovenia is one Slovenia, as well. Slovenia, yeah. Okay. So, so these wars here are driving people away. And they've come into Europe because they want a better life and it's also closer. Okay. So, what's happening? Who's making the money out of this? Uh, no one. Who's, who's benefiting, from, benefiting from this traffic of, 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 of uh, refugees? 
transport guys from the uh, they wouldn't pay for transport. Is it uh, the local? The traffickers. They the traffickers. Yeah, they get the like boat. They, they ask them like to pay ten grand and they take them and drop them off on the boats and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And they so prom promise them that like, oh you're gonna get all yeah. this promise and then. So there are back. people traffickers. The the poor people of Syria and Afghanistan are paying a lot of money to to get them on a boat from Turkey because it's next to Syria. Because of obviously you know there's a serious border between Syria and Turkey and there. There's a lot of people coming that way. Syria to Turkey and then onto Greece by boat and then through into Europe to these other places and, and hoping to get into the UK. So these traffickers here. So when what's the pull then? What's the, that's the push in terms of the wars. Yeah. What's the pull? Um, what's what's making the easy pull for the, the migration of poor for the traffickers? Yeah. It's supply and demand for the traffickers. Yeah. So Germany is if, if the people over here in Afghanistan, Syria, and these places know that Germany are taking one million refugees and Europe are taking refugees as well. That's going to make a lot of them. That's going to make a nice profit for these, aren't they? Because they're pulling people over here who really want to get here, and they're paying these traffickers the money to come over. Just for yeah. everyone there, Lithuania's accepting 250 refugees. No, no, 325 over two years. Go <laughs> Lithuania. Yeah. Right. Okay. So. It's a tiny country of two million people. Where am I going with this in terms of big data and, and internet of things then? So this is a big, this is a big real world problem. Yeah. So what could we do? The, the push is the wars, and then the pull is the traffic is to say to these people, give me, I don't know, all your savings and I'll get you on a boat to Greece because Germany is taking a million refugees. So there's all these factors going. Do you know what the UK government attitude is or what their sort of policy is to try and stop that? This, this pull factor. No. They are trying to set up camps in uh, Syria, Lebanon, on the border. Okay. They're trying to set up camps there so that the people will stay there rather than try and, and hopefully the war will end try and get war. to the UK. Yeah. So they're trying to stop it at the, at the root, which is, you know, which is a reasonable thing to try and do. Well, that's a big problem, isn't it? Okay. So, a little bit of lateral thinking then. How could we use big data, Internet of Things, link data, to try and address the problem of what, what, would, we, what would we need to know? Um, could map the areas where, well, map your, the world, for example, how the population of each country like the square foot of each country, um, employment rates for each country. You could even do like local perception of each country. There's that blue mix. Um, I suppose it's more okay, what about um, you know the the, I, the ILT is based on uh, um, sensors, isn't it? Yeah. Well, one of them is sensors. So we could do the mapping, as you say. Yeah. Who's going, who, who are we, in theory, building this for who would benefit from it? Would it benefit well, the traffickers? Well, no, obviously not. Or the <laughs> us? Well, I suppose if it was not big data, if there was a uh, call to gather whereabouts are the main drop points for publicly, you know, for public to submit where the main drop points the traffickers are dropping refugees to kind of map what kind of route they're using. Yeah. And then you know they could put, they could set up some sort of uh, I don't know like a point where they could like sort out those refugees in a timely and efficient manner rather than them spreading them and going everywhere. And I think that's chaos. the thing, isn't it? Yes. So then they can like say, well, you know, there's, here's what we can do for you. You know, there's, there's, you can go to this country, this country, this country. It's already limited in the amount they're taking, and they can't really accept you. So if you go there, you're not really gonna accept. Yeah. You know, a lot of help straight away, just so you know, you know. Yeah, I think the areas where there are issues. So 
how could we, so monitoring the progress of these refugees is going to be a key part of this. Yeah. But how, how are you going to monitor? <laughs> like, well, let's just how are you going to monitor about three million people? Yeah, well, okay. Divide, well. Who are, probably don't have technology. To be honest, well, most of them do have technology, surprisingly. Like, have you seen those videos? They all have iPhones and shit, and like phones. I was surprised, and I was expecting like these ragged refugees, oh, like awesome. really war torn. No, they got iPhones and stuff. They can check in. Because you see, it's like all of the refugees that are coming, they already were well enough to pay off traffickers. So it's not people, it's people who could afford to come here, not people that can't afford. What about the people that can't So, they have iPhones, Nikes. When you think about it, Jordans. We have a device here, possibly, a sensor of some kind that will give us a rough idea. Everybody, I don't suppose everybody's got one. No. But a lot of people do. It would you still give a good idea. You will be able to get a pretty good um, idea. Wasn't there like, a, you know, the shops when they have off a free Wi Fi and Bluetooth, they then track your movement? So, would you be able to set up intermittent checkpoints that would provide free Wi Fi? Then they use free Wi Fi, then you can kind of get the feel of where they're going based on the number of logins and log outs as, as, as they are moving. Yeah, so we have, we have a situation where it's possible that they have all the refugees, some of them, quite a fair proportion, I would imagine, yeah. have got some kind of device on is the track. Yeah. So, how are we going to get that information? Because the iPhone and that has a tells you where you are, doesn't it? It's got, yeah. it's got a it's got a location stamp. If you take a yeah. picture, it stamps your location. How do you yeah. get everybody else's data? That's the question. Yeah, because you can't you can't really make them this install ethical? an app saying like, oh, can you install an app so we track how you move through Europe? Yeah, Thanks, but, guys. <laughs> but, but we can you can track iPhones, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, but is no, it ethical to track other people's iPhones? Well. What's the payback? It's not in terms, of, in terms of improving citizens. Yeah. In terms of improving, uh, solving a problem. You know. Okay. So let, let's say we let's say we can track the flow. Okay. And the magic of science. Yeah. How how does it connect to Internet of Things, for example, and big data? You can connect to the internet, can't you, from, yeah. from, from, from anywhere? You can't take that big data from the internet, I think. Yeah. Right. Well, these, well, the internet is going to enable us to connect these devices. But the thing is, if you want people to use location services, first you have to sell them on it. And most people there are paranoid. You can't sell them in location well, services. We're, we're, doing, like we're doing some blue skies thinking here. Right. So we're well, assuming we solved that problem. We're, we're doing some and blue skies thinking. Things, so we know what we're doing. In what terms of... Do to that. Tell them yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're, doing, we're letting our minds wander into, you know, into ideal territory. But yeah. what I'm trying to say is we have a big problem yeah. and I'm trying to get you to think about how we can use these tools we've got to try and address it. That's really what I'm the sort of theme of the... So this sort of discussion. The phone data. So let, let's say, let's say we can track this. Mm. Yeah. Let's say we can do that. Okay, so what, how is that going to help us? We can track the we main We can track it through the internet in some way. We can track the main pickup points and drop off points from the traffickers. And then we can catch the traffickers. Like a popular flag. So what kind of data are we collecting? Our location data. Location data. Time. Time. You'd be able to then do distance. Time You'd be able to map the route. Do the movements and the routes. The duration of stay. Geographic information. So much yeah. more. Okay. Right. So we've got some sensors, which are these. Yeah. We've got the Internet of Things, which is connecting it all to some big data database somewhere. Let's yeah. say. So then we're getting this information. So how can we then use it? Um, the graph that Tim Berners-Lee uses the example where he passed play, like the earthquake one, it was all moving, you could be able yeah. to make a map very similar and you could pick um, like a specific date and you would be able to see pressing play. Yeah. What about uh, real time information? Yeah, why not? Okay. Streaming data. Mm -hmm. 
real time. So this data is being collected continuously, like a sensor, <coughs> and we're gathering all this stuff here. So we could actually watch. I've got a geography degree, so I should be able to draw a map. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah. Go, Dennis, give it, give it your all. You could do a triangle for okay. if you wanted. I don't know. Oh, okay. I won't give it. So we can actually. We'll take England for a squiggle. Yeah, we can take. We can. We can actually sort of see what the. How many people are going along different routes? Like say from Syria, to say uh, Greece here, possibly. <coughs> So we can actually represent, we might be able to do some kind of visualization yeah. where, the, flow, uh, where the flow is represented by some kind of size here. But then couldn't you link the data and say, well, why are people going to those certain countries? What is what are those certain countries yeah. got that others yeah. don't? So then that will affect immigration policy, for example. Um, what about... Uh, Registration and getting passports and things. Because once they've got a passport, the idea is when you get into the EU, you're supposed to register there and get your, your details and papers all sorted. But that's not happening anymore. Could be a database. Okay. Where else? We've got Turkey maybe. Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> better go to Turkey to do some My Turkey. handwriting has just not improved over 30 years with doing this job. <laughs> so we could, do you remember that map, that, that globe that uh, you showed with the uh, flashes of, yeah. of uh, alterations to the uh, open map? You could have a similar kind of thing showing these, these movements. And then you could, so if you, could, if you saw an influx, a big increase all of a sudden, you could then prepare the reception centres or whatever, mm -hmm. rather than have them all appear at one go without any preparation. You can set up, address the problem, where, where is this going to where is it going to appear? Maybe get some Navy boats out or whatever and, uh, and go and pick them up. Okay. Okay. So. I've got you thinking slightly out of the box now. Let's build it, guys. In terms, we can of, do uh, it. in terms of this idea of, it goes back to the idea of the, the assignment, really. Using Internet of Things, big data, possibly some sensors to try and solve a real world problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really the, the thrust of it that I've been trying to expand, expand your horizons a bit with a bit of blue skies thinking and, and imagination. One day, though, that might not actually be blue skies. We'll probably be able to do it. I'm pretty sure they can do it anyway. We just well, probably well, break the law. We, we, do have the, we do have the technology now, actually. Yeah. It's there in the iPhone. If we do it, can we get first? <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. I think we've explored that enough to give you the general idea. Okay, well, we'll just... We'll set you off on the second bit then. So what I'd like you to do for the other part of it is to explore some of the raw data, some of the data sources in a bit more detail. So I'd like you to, for the rest of the session, well, we'll, we'll do some timing in a minute, um, is to work in pairs, identify two open data sources, one from the lecture slides I'm using and another one, another new, a new one. Assess the quality of that in your assignment spec, there's a whole lot of categories in terms of um, the quality of the data to look at. Data, does it need cleansing? Does it need any sort of tweaking or uh, reworking in any way? And you've got those 13 Vs of big data as well. Uh, I'd take, probably take you too long to address each one of those, but you can sample that. Okay, so what I'd like to do then is say working in pairs, identify two open sources the open data sources, one from the lecture slides and one from you find yourself, and try and assess the quality of that data in some way. Put that, put your findings down in a couple of slides, post it up to the 
open sources area and then we'll you can then talk through it and we'll see if anything what other discussion points come out of that okay a bit of timing then so it's half past 10 say half an hour for a break 11 say half 11 an hour or so okay so in an hour or so we'll see what results you've got so we'll I'm gonna, so we'll have a short break and then get to work on addressing that second activity. Anybody not sure what they're doing? Sorry? Yeah, of course you can. That's what, that's the idea, yes. So we'll have a break now and then we'll say we've got to resume again at half eleven, regroup at half eleven and see what you've come up with. Shall I do your cards? Oh. Which I thought I'd put in my box. Oh, do you know how it done it? Where is it? I thought I had it. I don't. Oh, oh there it is. Yes, I did. Thank you. 